Hello, welcome to PBS The Tutor. Just to inform you that, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and you can also invite others to subscribe. Plus, we also offer tuitions in uh, all categories. So, in case you need tuitions in any of the subjects, please just try to contact me on 0978076090. So, let's go. Question B2 says, When, cal when calcium metal is reacted with water, there is a rise in temperature. How would you detect the rise in temperature? You are saying you need to use a thermometer. And just using a thermometer is what can help you determine the, 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 the rise in temperature. You measure your initial temperature and you measure your final temperature, then you get. Then, what type of reaction takes place? For temperature to rise when you hold or something, that means this type of reaction is what we call an exothermic reaction. Give a reason for your answer above because heat is being given off to the surrounding. So whenever heat is being given off to the surrounding, we call that an exothermic reaction. As a result, the surrounding gains an increase in temperature than the internal system. Potassium is found in the same group of the predictable as calcium. Compare the reaction of the two metals with water. Now, you know that as you go down, we are going to find um, potassium is there and uh, calcium is somewhere down here. So calcium is somewhere here and potassium is somewhere there. So the, as you go down the group, the active series increases. As a result, calcium is more reactive. Now since calcium is more reactive, it's going to react vigorously or more with water than potassium itself. Give us for answer. Calcium is more reactive than potassium. As you go down the group, reactivity series increases. Question B3 says beryllium burns in fluorine to form a white solid, beryllium chloride. Name the type of bonding in beryllium fluoride. Now, not beryllium here, it's a metal. So I'm saying beryllium sorry, it's a metal, and fluorine is a non metal. So the type of bonding. That is found between a metal and a non-metal is what we call ionic or covalent type of bonding. If you ask to draw the uh, the compound that is formed, show or electrons, you first need to start with what is losing electrons. In this case, we have beryllium, which is found in group two. You can see positive two there, losing two electrons. That's why I did not include electrons in this shell. Then, when you look at this formula, you need two fluorine atoms, which we have here and here. Now, fluorine is found in group 7. That means it needs to gain only one electron. So, for this one to reach two electrons, it needs one electron to be donated that side and one electron to be donated this side, which is represented by this X and this X. We can start here, we've got X. Hence, we've got eight electrons there and eight electrons there. And make sure you light and minus there to show that they are gaining one electron each. Suggest any two physical properties of a compound that have similar bonding as barium fluoride. In short, they ask me about the properties of ionic compounds. One of their solids or crystals at RTP, that is room temperature and pressure. They have high melting point and high boiling point. Now remember, this is a property on its own and this is a property of it on its own, so do not combine. They have high densities. So in short, I've uh, listed property one, property two here, and three, then four. Question B4 says, Elena wanted to obtain clear water from mud water. Name the process that Elena would use to obtain the clean, uh, the clear water. Now, when you have solid particles mixed with water, you can use water to call filtration to obtain both two substances at the same time we are going to obtain pure water of course and uh, also clear water also mud or sand now if you name this process which is you need to draw you need to know how to draw this separation technique we have filtration setup though not well drawn but it's illustrating something so you have a filter paper there we have residue in short we can say mud which has remained there we have a funnel we have a clamp and stand here you can see it then we have a filtrate there you can see as well 
then give an industrial application of the process named in A above. How, what is the use of um, uh, filtration at industrial level? You, can, you know that at waterworks, uh, they use this in the purification of water at the same waterworks, the same water that we drink in homes. Chlorine, bromine, and iodine are elements in the group surveying on the periodic table. This stop the changes in the states of the element at room temperature and pressure as atomic numbers increase. Now, as atomic numbers increases, the state of element increases from gas to liquid then to solid. In short, we are saying, as you go down, you've got chlorine on top, fluorine and everything there. It's clear that as you go down, uh, fluorine is... Um, Chlorine is a gas, fluorine is a gas, but um, bromine is, par is partially liquid, liquid like that, then iodine as well, then we've got enzatine, which is a solid, which is a black solid there. So as you go down, and as uh, as well as atomic number or masses increases, there is a, uh, a change from gas to liquid, then to solid. Why is chlorine used in purification of water? Why do you use chlorine in purification of water? It's very simple, just to kill germs or bacteria that commonly grow in water supply. So that we know we may not be uh, sick of diseases or to prevent water from being contaminated. When I write an ionic equation for the reaction between chlorine and aqueous potassium bromide solution, include these state symbols. Now, what you need to know that chlorine, when it reacts with potassium bromide, you need to understand that chlorine is more reactive than bromine. As a result, chlorine is going to displace bromine like the way it has happened in this side. So, potassium bromide plus chlorine as a gas, yes, aquas. So because uh, chlorine is more reactive than bromine, it's going to displace it and chlorine is going to get bonded to potassium. That's why we're going to have potassium chloride there. Now, to write an ionic equation, you only need to consider elements or compounds in ionic, sorry, in molten state. In this case, we've got two. First, you need to balance your equation. Then you need to branch each ion. So we've got two potassium and two bromine here. Here we are going to leave it because it's a gas and it's not in aquas. Then this is an aqua, so we are going to say 2 K, 2 potassium and 2 chlorine because 2 is multiplying all the numbers inside. Then we leave this alone. Then we cancel what we call spectator ions. Those are ions that are not taking part in the reaction. And you are going to see that you are going to remain 2 bromine aquas plus chlorine. Uh, 2 chlorine. So here is supposed to be negative and also they are supposed to be negative. Then you are going to say these two when they bond together, they are going to form this. Below a chemical formula of organic compounds, we've got C two H. All these you can see them. Name the compound which is actually steam. Now steam, partial water. We can just quote that. We can react with uh, uh, only what we call alkenes. Alkenes in the formation of alcohols. And one of the alkenes here is here, which is called ethene. Remember the general formula for alkene. You should always be able to remember it. Is that like that? So if you have two here, number of carbon atoms, you will put two. You are going to have four and two, which you have here. Then draw the structure formula or compound which turns blue litmus paper red. Now. We don't got to ask than braces and sorts. You know that acids are the only one that turn blue litmus paper red. And in this case, we have acids. Uh, likewise, we have this as an acid. Why? Uh, because of the presence of COO and H, the carboxyl gr uh, group. Even this one here is also because you can see that the CO. And another O is there giving us a carboxylic acid. Even this one here, you can see that C and the two oxygen atoms they are giving us uh, another carboxylic acid. So I drew this one as a sample, as well as this one as a sample. But even this one or that one or that one, they are correct. Choose two compounds which are isomers. Now, you know that isomers, these are substances which have the same structure formula. Now, we are we, which one are those? So they have uh, the same chemical formula but different structure formula. And when you look at this, you've got this. Look at it properly. 
and look at this they are the same when you count the number of hydrogen carbon atoms and all